Welcome to How to Use Blender. T today we're going to be talking about objects. How to use objects and why do we have objects. First we're going to start out with my with my average brick scene. Because I always start with this ever since about 2007. Because your Blender save files also save your user interface. So it saves where all this stuff is. Now I also discovered something else. So press N, open up this menu, and go down here. Press Start Display. And now it shows all my key presses. Like Z shows that. I'll press N to close the menu. N, it shows it. So let's go to Control Up Arrow. <laughs> it shows that too. They thought of everything. So now, what are objects? Well, that's an object. This is an object. That's an object. This is the camera. That's where the, you see stuff. Like you can see stuff there, or the light that lights up the room. And we can add more objects. Like wherever we add this little cursor, that's where the objects go. We can add a cube. We can add. Here? And move it even. Which is awesome. Now why would we want to have everything in their own distinct little objects? Wouldn't we just have everything where we can just edit everything from one big world? Well let's imagine if you have a really, really big and complicated world where everything has to have its own textures and everything, and there's leaves and bark and so many things that you could accidentally accidentally select. Well, if you try to select the corners of this box, you might actually accidentally select like the corners of that of that sphere. It'd be very difficult. So we have objects where we can just work, we can just focus on editing the, the properties and the geometry of this object or that object or this object well, let's work on this one right now so we can press A to deselect or select all and B you select everything inside of that box so let's imagine if I went like that and I select that well if we had one big uh, if we didn't have objects I would have selected half that sphere and that would have been kind of difficult so it works out pretty good that we have objects not counting you can start everything from a cube like you can you can change it by you can like move it like that or you can press E to extrude it and you can like extrude it again and there you just made a Tetris piece or you can control D or shift D and you could move that and you can extrude it you can go to W and merge at center and you could do so many things but right now I want to just focus on how to move the objects Let's delete that by pressing X. With this one, okay, so we can press G to move it around on the screen, R to rotate it, or Z, oh, what's it's S, to scale it. You can all, but, but the thing is, that's not really all that useful, because with G, you're just moving around your own viewpoint, and with R, you're just kind of, kind of scaling it, uh, you're, you're, ro you're, you're rotating it from your own viewpoint, and with S, you're just scaling it all around. So, you can press a G, and you can refine it to X, Y, or Z axis, because like, that's the X axis, this is the Y axis, and up and down is the Z axis. So you can have X, you're only moving it to the X axis, Z, you're only moving on the Z axis, and Y, you're only moving on the Y axis. Same thing with rotation. R is rotating like that, rotating around the center of the, sc of the screen. Z is only rotating in the Z axis, up and down. X and Y. And the same thing with scale. We have scale, Z, X, and Y and this works inside of it so not only can you move the object and change it you can move and change what comprises the object all the little pieces in here now press A to select it all we can move it around with G we can rotate it we can scale it and we can undo it with control Z but we can grab it in Z X or Y we can rotate it in Z X or Y and we can scale it in Z, X, or Y. But now, there's one last thing that I need to tell you, but it only works in object mode. Like, this is edit mode. This is object mode. Now, there's global coordinates and there's local coordinates. What you see right here is the red one, the green line, and the blue line. That's the global coordinates. But each object actually has its very own personal global coordinates. Uh, local coordinates that you could always choose from if you really need it. Like let's say we go rotate in the y direction like that. And we have it kind of tilted like that. Now you want to uh, you want it to be able to move it just in that direction. You don't want to have to go over and up. You don't want to have to go up and over. You just want to go simply like that. Now if you're if you're going to go in the x, you have to go x and then you have to go gy or oh, gz. That's it. To move it. But you can go g Z, Z, and now that that switches to the local coordinates to each object. Like you can copy and paste this, 
or rotate it on the y-axis and go GZZ and that recognizes it in its own personal z-axis GZZ like that or XX and it recognizes its own x-axis so you have your own set of coordinates that you can choose from if you need well I hope that's informative and I hope that helps you make really cool 3D stuff I plan to get more in-depth about stuff later on but I gotta start with the simple stuff now so hope you enjoyed the video see ya